Hey, it's Andre, and this is the Park Zone SE5A. Yes, yes. Welcome to um, what's in the hangar. I haven't quite come up with a serious name for this, but uh, I figured I would talk about some of the airplanes that are in the hangar. And uh, it's a cold, horrible day, uh, and uh, why not? So, this is my SE5A. I've had this airplane since September of 2017, and I haven't flown it, and that's terrible. And uh, it, it got me thinking, well, really, the primary reason it's on the bench today is because I want to bind it over to my DX9. And I discovered or realized after I'd done all the setup back in 2017 that the receiver is buried deep within the airplane. And the only way I'm going to get it to bind to my DX9 is if I go in there and put the bind plug. So uh, it's an opportunity to, one, bind it to the DX9, put an extension cable on that bind plug location, and swap out the, um, the ec three to an XT60 uh, and we can talk about the airplane so again this is I'm gonna pull up the specs off my phone because uh, it's been such a long time but uh, again this airplane actually uh, park zone slash horizon and everything they released this thing in May of 2011 so next year this thing is 10 years old I have spares um, like for bits and pieces and everything. Like a buddy of mine had a hobby shop closing down. He snapped up a bunch of props and everything and, and, and different pieces of equipment. Um, I'm terrified if I crash this airplane. I don't know if anybody else has this problem because it is so special to me. Uh, it's such a beautiful looking airplane that I would be devastated, I think, if I, if I burned this one in. But at the same time, it's an airplane. It needs to be flown. So Basically, I will be flying this thing uh, spring of 21, uh, so I want to get it all ready to fly. Uh, so again, it's the Park Zone SE5A, 37-inch wingspan, uh, about 30 inches long, weighs about uh, uh, 1,150 grams or 40 ounces, and like I said, released in May of 2011. I wasn't even looking at RC planes back in 2011. So uh, it came equipped as a bind and fly, uh, with a uh, AR-600. I think I've got an orange. Don't don't hate me. It's what I had uh, when I got the airplane used from a buddy. It didn't have a receiver in it. If I had a Spectrum 6-channel line around, I would drop it in there, but the Orange RX are just fine for what this airplane is flying. Uh, I actually, like I said, I've never flown it, and that's that's terrible. I've flown my Albatross a little bit, and I had intended to fly it uh, this last year, but I never got around to it. So here we go. I'm going to dive in here. I'm going <laughs> to get to the receiver I have to take the top wing off got to drop the bottom wing off because the receiver's jammed in there and like I said while I'm in there I will change out the uh, uh, I'll change the plug on the uh, the uh, ESC so um, oh yeah 10 by 8 prop 30 amp ESC battery is spec'd out to be a 1800 uh, milliamp 3s uh, I think I get a slim 22 in there from memory and or a 1300 so you're not flying it for a huge amount of time, and for all the videos I saw, they're super graceful. So, there we go. I'm Andre, Park Zone SE5A. So, the first thing you need to do while taking off the wings is uh, I don't know if the shot's going to show, but we saw this actually. Horizon uh, E Flight reused this idea when they put out the, um, the PT 17. Uh, and so it's just little top pins and that's how you get your, your wings off. So it's construction wise. I mean, I see uh, I've actually only taken this plane apart once before and that was when I first got it uh, But I see the very similar things where you know the posts are named and everything So the PT 17 owes a little bit of its uh, heritage to this design and and something to note when you're pulling these things apart the uh, There's different lengths. So that's something to notice when we're reassembling so be careful with that. Don't want to do any unnecessary damage. Now, with that released, it's not a biplane anymore. So we're just going to start by removing some screws and take it from there. Yeah, got to remove your landing gear, which is just four screws, thank goodness. Uh, they're just capped under these little pieces over here. The front gear might actually pivot, but again, the objective is to do zero foam damage while doing this. So there's a plate. It is labeled actually L for left. I'd rather take the extra steps removing the equipment than uh, run the risk of uh, 
damaging, doing unnecessary damage. There you go, gear assembly has been removed. Nice and easy. And with that, the wing. Or is it just snapped in there really well? It's just in there really well. There you go, wing assembly. So the ailerons are on a Y cable, which is fine. And then all the other stuff, it is an orange RX. Uh, and then I now have access to my stock ESC, which I will probably remove, remove and redo all the wiring real quick while I'm in here. And I will do a bind. Uh, like I said, the decision is, do I run an extra bind cable in there or just do it right now while it's on the bench and just assume the lock will remain. Bind failed. Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds. Bind complete. Time to do the speed controller, uh, which I've been running, or run, I've set up initially with a uh, XT60 uh, to EC3 adapter. It's time to get rid of that and put in, where's, where did I put my little adapter? There it is, proper one. I have uh, no, sorry, I have one EC3 battery in the entire stock. So I don't even save these anymore. Ruby. Whoops. Just turning it so it gets down inside so you don't actually see any of the uh, connection the contact points. Ta da! Beautiful. All right, let's reassemble this airplane. I'm just gonna re-verify that we did it right. Great, and I should have rudder, elevator, and Great, let's put the wings back on this airplane and be done. One and two. And this time, I'll guide those wires in a little better. I was noticing they had folded and there was probably one that was pinned underneath uh, the tie down point. Okay, 
You know what, actually, now that I've got the power, or not the side of the wing on, I should probably do a quick power test. And this is why we test stuff. I actually have a dead, an unfunctioning servo. All right, let's change ports just for giggles while we diagnose this problem real quick. Oh, that's bad news. That's a dead servo. So one of the benefits of actually doing some bench testing and checking your old airplanes is to see if there's any issues. And when I was reassembling it, the left wing uh, servo was non-responsive. And I guess it's one of those things where it sat so long that it was just stuck. So I've got the servo tester on it and just waking it up and it looks like it's back to restoring. I thought I had a, um, I thought I had a bad servo lead or something, but it moved once or twice, and then once I loosened it up, it seemed to be a lot better. Um, definitely something I'm going to have to keep an eye on, uh, because ailerons are important, right? So, anyhow, it's uh, it's centered up, so I'm going to put it back in there, but it's something I definitely will log and note uh, for future uh, references. And then things like, uh, check all your uh, silicon pieces. I just noticed this one. That one's torn as well, or just old and aged out. So, uh, it's, again... It's an old plane, so you've got to go through it all, but I'm glad I was able to actually to check that servo, and I'm happy enough with its operation. I think it'll be fine. It's just one of those things where it had been stuck for such a long time, so good excuse to take the airplanes out and, uh, you know, exercise some of those electro electrical components that could, um, you know, lock up over time. So, all right, back to the reassembly. Okay, that's in there, not gonna move around. This time the wires will be in a nicer spot, so they're not likely to interact with anything like they did before. Okay, good, dump it down. All right, radio's on, transmitter's on, battery power, and this time we should see. Hooray, hooray for ailerons. Make sure there's no wires sitting nice and flush, beautiful, clean, great. Okay, landing gear. <laughs> Fun part, reassembly of the wing. So these are like eight points, contact points between the center uh, struts and the backs and the, the outer wing struts. So the shorter ones are in the outer wings. There you go, gentle pressure. There we go. No need to force anything. Just be gentle, take your time. Slide up that silicon piece. There you go. All the way up. Nice. Okay. Good tug to make sure you've actually seated it in, especially on the inner wing. The outer, sort of the, uh, yeah, the outer ones you can tell because it's notched on the outside, where on the inner one, it is notched on the inside.
All right, so I've got a 3S1300 in my hand and uh, do a quick load. This is the really the only awkward part with a bottom loading kind of airplane is they're cumbersome. Like you're, you're flipping them upside down at the field and everything. So the possibility of damage is exponentially increased as far as I'm concerned, but you gotta do it, right? So I like to take the airplane, hold it upside down like this. And uh, there are a bunch of straps and everything. I think in the Albatross, I got rid of the straps and I just put in Velcro, uh, which I, in my opinion probably just holds the battery a lot better. So, which is probably what I'm gonna end up doing. Just rip that stuff out oh, and uh, go from there. I'm gonna remove that Velcro, those straps and put in a piece of Velcro right across because those straps are annoying and the battery should in theory stay in, so. There, with the Velcro in place, it's not coming out. 77 millimeters from the top wing off the leading edge is the CG point. And that puts it very nicely. There's a line actually that I will lift up and show. Uh, it's etched into the plane or the previous owner had already done it, but there you go, so that's my CG point. I'm actually kind of curious with a 3S 1300 if I will get my CG. Booyah, that is impressive. All right, so that Velcro versus the tie downs work and a little 3S 1300 means the airplane will fly quite nicely. Okay, moment of truth. Right aileron. Left aileron. Elevator up, elevator down. Right, left, and. Happy airplane. I'm Andre, and this is the Park Zone SE5A, debuted in May of 2011, so this plane is about to be turned 10 years old. Can't wait to go flying with it when the weather turns nice again. I hope you enjoyed this What's in the Hangar series. Stay tuned for more airplanes, because there's lots to talk about, and I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the bench time. I'm Andre, thanks for watching.